What's up guys, it's Oakley, and we're going to be slicing and dicing the video that CA put out. This video in particular is going to be about sort of the armies and the garrisons. Uh, so they showed a little bit of clips here, and the, they didn't really call it out. So what I'm going to be doing here is kind of snipping out all of these little unit cards here so we can look at them piecemeal on our own terms, on our own time. So let's go ahead and take a look at the various units that they just glossed over there. And uh, it's actually going to be pretty interesting. So first we're going to start off with your basic troops. Swordsmen, halberdiers, and greatswords. Take a look at the numbers. It looks like units are 120 apiece. Pretty average. The health bar there going steadily up with the great swords being the most expensive. With a high charge bonus of 18. Though comparable to the charge bonus of the swordsman. Also look here and there. So for instance the armor of the swordsman has a little shield next to it and the weapon strength of the halberdiers has two icons next to it same thing with the great sword so we're not quite sure what that is is that a special add-on that you can get for specific units by going to a particular blacksmith is that inherent to the entire unit or does it have to do with the legendary lord and the buffs that they give stuff like that is kind of the things that I was looking for here but I'm glad to see all these stats showed really up front uh, speed shown predominantly here Leadership as well uh, being a key role here. So on the fly these units are looking great glad to see the unit strength in the upkeep like this um, And actually I was surprised the charge bonus on these guys is rather low and you can imagine that uh, we're going to be seeing much higher charge bonuses for the units Moving on to the range. Uh, I was able to capture handgunners crossbowmen hellstorm rocket batteries and mortars the mortars Obviously now going to be in the game all but confirmed, you know, so let's go over the range so typical range for handgunners 135, it gets bumped up by 20 to 155 for the crossbowmen, and then ranges of 480 and 480 for the artillery pieces themselves. Small charge bonuses for these, that's because it's the crew, but look at the weapon strength, 24, I don't quite know what weapon strength is, perhaps the damage of each round, but that's different than missile damage. Uh, and man, look at the Hellstorm rocket battery, 256, so that is going to be your hero slayer, essentially. Um, so this is this this is where it starts to get a bit intriguing for me uh, looking exactly at these various units and how they might differentiate one from another and uh, for instance you know I, I'd be intrigued to see what they're gonna do when it comes to the dwarves which we haven't necessarily seen because you can apply runes to artillery uh, how you know seeing how that's gonna buff it the next is gonna be the pistoliers and the Reichsguard so uh, the speed is gonna be pretty differentiated for the pistoliers they have a 92 speed as opposed to the 65, so they are definitely going to be able to run around uh, and be a nuisance. Their range is 60, which is pretty good. Missile damage 37 because they have, uh, you know, pistols, obviously. Um, but low ammo and low charge bonus. Whereas the Reichsguard guys, look at their armor, 120 with the additional icon on top. So that could be a little buff on top of that. Next, I wanted to capture some of the high-level stuff, uh, garrisons, for instance. So we looked at Altdorf, and briefly they showed here what you get as a garrison. Look at this. Then this is top level, um, tier 5 city, you get 2, two Demigriff Knights, 2 Empire Knights, 2 Reichsguard, 2 Greatswords, 4 Handgunners, and 1 Steam Tank. So first off, that's really impressive because it means garrisons are strong, but also notice the Empire Knights. That's a unit that is not on the Empire's official roster. So what that seems to indicate is there are additional units that perhaps will just be garrison only. What that makes me think is perhaps state troops will make an appearance later on. Or maybe it just means that it's a unit that they're tinkering with that they may throw on to the general roster in the future. But uh, that was cool to see. I was happy to see that. Uh, so on top of this garrison, you can also invest specifically in your walls. This is a defensive uh, structure. So here, tall walls, I believe, is tier 2 or tier 3. Uh, it's not the highest one. And look what you get. Improved tower, projectiles, cannonballs. And then you get additional garrison, outriders, halberdiers, uh, swordsmen, and you know two handgunners. So already you combine those, and you have a pretty formidable army, essentially for free every time someone attacks you. Uh, and this is not the mobs that you would get in Rome 2. Now, if you reinforce your walls to the top level, which is, you know, this reinforced walls, uh, you will get improved tower projectiles, clockwork bombs. Uh, you can just imagine how punishing that would be if in already, you know, Rome 2 and Attila. With fire arrows, that was devastating. Just imagine how the bombs are going to be. Um, then the garrison they get here is, you know, one Empire Knights, two Greatswords, two Halberdiers, two Handgunners. So you combine the reinforced walls with the top level city and you're looking at a huge elite army that can pop up to defend your provinces. That's going to be very, very crucial, I think, to make sure that, you know, these capital cities are not pushovers, that you don't have armies being able to just sneak between your lines, especially with the underway 
uh, mechanic and kind of snipe out your cities. They will have a formidable garrison to deal with. And it's interesting to see how much cavalry that the Empire has given uh, for their settlements. So I wonder if the settlements will actually be big enough to use those cavalry. Or if, you know, it would make more sense for the Empire to have more crossbowmen and, and units like that manning the walls. But uh, anyways, that's about it for this video. I just wanted to cover the military uh, and defensive focused ones. Uh, it does look really cool at the bottom. Let's just revel in the UI. Very clean. Uh, the unit cards look beautiful. Uh, the stats on the left prominently displayed. Everything just pops out. Very intuitive as to what everything means. And uh, yeah, there are still some unanswered questions uh, that I have. So when the unit icon, for instance, here on the top left shows armor and there's a little icon over it, what does that mean and how do you get that? So that is something we have to wait to see. Uh, it looks like the XP as well um, just does standard what you'd imagine. You can see it's giving little buffs to the unit stats right through there. Um, so somewhat interesting. Uh, I'm really eager to see how this all plays out in multiplayer. The unit variety looks pretty good. They've been increasing the roster, um, but still it uh, it begs for a little bit more in terms of units for the Empire. Uh, more representation of the different knights and all that, but uh, then again we do have the ability to have all kinds of lords uh, and characters like that to make the armies in multiplayer more interesting. So this, to say the least, has me salivating, which is really good. You know, this is obviously, I, I think this whole video was very good. Um, they dove into a bunch of stuff, and there is a lot to kind of uh, pride uh, or prize out, pry, excuse me, is the word I'm looking for, to pry out of this video. They didn't explicitly mention everything, but you can see just from the short unit cards that we saw, I was able to take, um, you know, a fair amount out of it. The next thing I wanted to talk about here is we are looking at Middenheim. We looked at Altdorf. On the campaign map, all these cities look pretty different, so I'm really hoping that they do have their own personalized, customized battle map templates. Uh, if they were all the same cookie cutter, that would be really, really um, uh, uh, depressing, to be honest. Um, if they're going to the attention to detail that they've been doing so far, I really hope that it plays out in the cities, otherwise it would be a big disappointment. I do think they will, given that there's so much to draw from from the lore, and sort of they've unhandcuffed them, uncuffed themselves when it comes to art, and so I can imagine the art team is making all sorts of creative cities that can be differentiated from each other very easily when it comes to fantasy, as opposed to the cookie-cutter history stuff. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you in the next one. Peace out.